Hello, in this first video we'll be looking at creating a simple model. It will be a very simple model, but um, I'll show you what's involved. So first of all, start with a new model, job details and so on. We set the model type. It's going to be a space model. There are um, specialist analysis types available. Likewise, you can put in global restraints. In this case, I believe it's a full space model. Units. Uh, full choice of units, SI, kilometer meters, kip feet, kip inch. I like kilometer meters, but I also like to adjust mass to be kilograms rather than tons. Fully customizable. Grids and stories. There is a default snap grid. Um, I'll leave it at one meter by one meter. Um, we can also add in story elevations if we, if we want. We also need to start up our various codes even if we're not doing design um, these the, the, the codes will give us access to particular material grades and I'll set that by um, um, in um, EC2 EC3 um, codes and I'll have the S355 steel um, 3040 concrete and 500B um, reinforcements we're going to be doing steel in today, but um, this will be fine. Maybe it's preferred so it will be remembered in our preferences. We can also access um, superseded design codes if we require that. We can add sections here, but I'll do that in, in the model. And likewise, generic data gives us a few standard forms. Again, I'll just create the model directly in the interface. So here we have the graphical view where we can see things, the data explorer where we can access all the model information, output results, see save views, and also on the properties panes over here, um, access information about the elements and the views and so on. We're also in the design layer uh, where we'll be defining the, the values which create the geometry. So I'm going to click on add entities. I'm going to, you see the test wants to snap to the group. I'm going to make it five meters long. Um, and they can see it right there. Let's just zoom in. And here is, here is our section. Um, the doll at the moment. Right. Display restraints. No restraints on this model at the moment. So I'll go to nodal selection. Select this end. And I'm going to nodal properties. I'm going to fix that one in position. Now this end, I will give it just a Z restraint. This is going to be a cropped cantilever. Um, also at the moment, this is just one long piece of steel. Well, it will be steel, thank you for buying it. But I want to mesh it down smaller. So I select this, see its properties, it's a 1D generic. There are other options available. <coughs> we don't need some releases. What we'll do, do need to do is um, down here, element size. By none, it defaults to one element per per member. Um, I'd set where it connects to others. In case I will say, well, let's go for a one meter grid uh, mesh. You can see now there are some node previews available. They haven't been created yet. They will be created when we mesh this. What else we need? So we've already got our materials and the properties section library I will create um, a section what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the catalog I'm going to go to British universal beams and I'm just going to pick the first section this thing is far too small let's say that it's a bit slender never mind we'll do some design later on this Right, let's now um, save the file. Uh, and let us change over to the analysis layer and add some loads on. So I right click and say switch layer. There's also a keyboard shortcut. And there are no elements here at the moment. So let us um create the elements from members 
and you see unlike on the design layer where it's one long member as this layer we have a number of short elements okay let's add some loads on um we can by going to gravity loads just say i just want everything to be um self-weight calculated and i can just click the first row and hit enter a number of times and it'll copy the default row down let's just shrink the column so you can see that um so this will just calculate the self-weight of the section from the material density and the cross-section area and give us a load automatically in locus one locus one not very descriptive so let's go to locus description and say locus one is going to be the um permanent loads load type is get load source one and we have another um variable and this is going to be live loads we'll call that source two you should note that here the low case has updated itself to, sh to show the name and if we go back to graphical view we can show the load diagrams we can see the self weight automatically calculated on these sections i will also add in some live loads i'll, I'll just select all those create element loading create beam loads in the variable low case uniform z direction minus five for example this is there are various other loading options change this let's just use the plus sign there is a variable load so we've got a variable load and a permanent load uh, now the variable that we just added is available through the data table if we want to go in and edit that um, you see it's quite easy to, to create um, directly in, in the interface nice right. now um, the analyze button has now um, activated because we've got loads and geometry and so on so we analyze this and just enlarge this so we can see um, and you can see the various analysis results it's worked well and uh, there's, there's no error messages which is good it's a good model so let's have a look so switch the loads off switch the solids off and we can see the bedding moment for example and just unshrink those so we can see the bedding moments we can see the uh, shear force uh, and we can see the axle load which is none as you might expect you also see the displacement diagram or we can see the displacement shape again let's have a look in elevation and the feather shape is as as you would expect we can also access the uh, numerical values of, of these results so we'll go to the annotation option i can select any numbers and we can see the values permanent loads variable loads and ooh, the combination ultimate limit state combination so i'll go down to tasks um, and cases combination cases i'm going to create a combination case but i'll go to the factors tab and call this ULS 1.35 1.5 um, this will multiply the dead and live by these factors this is now available in our list and we can see the ultimate limit states um, bedding moments shear forces and so on now these are the diagrams um, which we can access through the diagrams pane as well these buttons here are the shortcuts um, we can also access contours Let's say the displacements, bending moments, so on.
again, these are also generally in on the toolbar shortcuts. There are also tables. Um, let me just go and close these others. Um, so we can go to the output view. Again, you can see beam spring results, beam spring forces and moments. And here are um, the results for for the various elements in the various cases. So we max and min. We go alter the limit states. So we can see um, the results for each each of the individual elements, and also the worst cases along from any of these. Um, if we were to change this, so let's just delete the results. And I'm going to add in some additional dead loads. Okay, load. Um, global load case balance on minus two, for example, and reanalyze that. Update the contours so you can see the um the diagrams and the outputs and so on, these are all kept up to date um, and, and regenerated as appropriate with, with, with the uh, loading and so on. Um, when we're happy with these, we can then um, print them out. One more screen. Or likewise on the graphical view. Um, well, that would be a beam moment diagram. Um, and we can print these out as well. Okay.